Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled summer schedule meeting of the Sunderland Select Board of Awesome. It's called to order at 7.36, excuse me. And we have a very light agenda tonight. We're gonna talk about disposing of buildings, maybe a conservation restriction, sewer updates with respect to sewer extensions, maybe the buying of a property, nothing really important. Anyway, we're going to start with select board updates, if we could. I'll start on the end here. Uh, I'm going to be scheduling a ditch committee meeting. Is it time to get back to our ditch fund? Um, between our other meeting schedule and vacations and stuff, we kind of slowed down a little bit there. So we'll be scheduled. I'm going to try to do it. Since we don't have a meeting next Monday, I'm going to shoot for Monday, but sometime between Monday and Wednesday. We'll see, as long as we get enough Just notice. Send out Wednesday. notice, get posted, all that stuff. Yeah. Great. So, um, otherwise, I've been on vacation, so. Congratulations, welcome back. Uh, thank you. Tom, anything? Um, <clears throat> the, we had a, a long-term member of our community pass away today. Hmm. Uh, Marilyn, I've known, I, I knew Marilyn for, Marilyn Munn passed away. Oh, nice. I knew Marilyn, probably the oldest person, the longest that I remember a person in the town of Sunderland because she moved in with her mom two doors down from where I lived and she moved into my best friend at first grade, Billy Edwards' house because they moved to Schenectady, <laughs> New York or, no, not Schenectady, uh, Rutland, Vermont. Um, so I've known Marilyn for, for uh, 52 years or so. Um, Marilyn, Marilyn, through the time, was very involved in the town. Um, and I, I would say that uh, heaven has received a beautiful angel today. That's what I heard today to describe her, and it's really, it's fitting for Marilyn because she was, in my respect, or my understanding, an angel. So I'd, I'd like to... Uh, and, and I know Marilyn, I was out on the middle of the ocean and I was on a boat with, with two other people and next thing I know we started talking I, and I mentioned Marilyn's name and the person, Phil Antis, grew up with Marilyn and they were the best hmm. of friends. I go, how does that happen? He was from Concord or Lexington or whatever and what are the chances that... Sh but. She was go. a teacher, so she influenced a lot of people. But she grew up with Phil, so um, it was it, uh, it was a sad day for our town. Um, a couple things. Um, one is that we we have received emails um, about the configuration of the center of town, the new signs that went up. Um, mm -hmm. Just like to let people know that the intersection is a state intersection it's not controlled by us we, we so we do have some conversations with the state about the intersection but it's interesting because uh, and people have actually I've actually talked to people and as many people talk to me that think it's the greatest thing since ever that there's a long time coming for the intersection there's people that, that don't think it's a, such a great thing and cause an ex extended uh, t wait times at the light. I can tell you why it was done, it, and I, I think it's important to realize it was done for um, safety. People were not stopping at the light when pedestrians were pushing the button. Uh, pedestrians were walking, and the next thing you know, cars were hitting pedestrians. Um, and it was a very... And not only pedestrian, but people <clears throat> that were crossing the road, they may have been doing it on their bicycle. And oh. you, know, you can say if that's right <clears throat> or wrong, but pe the people you know, pushed the button, thought they had the safety to walk. And, and if anybody's ever sat down in the center of town and watched the cars, they'll notice that there's many cars, even today, that don't stop at the light. They just kind of roll through, and they're looking <clears throat> to the left. They're not looking to the right where people are are walking so <clears throat> I, I guess the state the state has identified that area as a high traffic um, 
accident area. They're, they're, they're looking at trying to do something there. Um, even to the point last Thursday, there was a meeting in, um, down in Mass DOT um, where Lucy, Lucy has worked the last 18 years on the center of town, keeping the gardens, um, the flowers and everything in an in outstanding, beautiful um, portion of our town. And they, they question uh, some of the plantings um, that people can't see. So Lucy has to look at um, scaling back that as well um, and see if that will continue. And Lucy's been doing that for 18 years. So, so there are changes occurring um, in that area. Some of it's, you know, it's all, it's all really driven by public safety. Um, and, and as of yet, no one's come up with, you know, the financing to, to take the next step. But the state is seriously talking about doing something down there. So um, I, I would be, you know, be if you're concerned, um, there will be some public hearings in very near. One person did send an email and questioned that they thought it was a good idea, the no turn on red, but they suggested that. Um, there should be maybe some signboards or something like they do for for a few weeks or a month, just to notify people of the change of the of the traffic in that area that there are a red light. So we will ask Sherry to do something about it. I would also say that um, we have received a number of um, concerns from residents about speed of vehicles in in town. Um, Remind everybody that that not all, but a large number of people that are going in excess of of the speed limit are people that live in our neighborhoods, um, and and I can say that of when we have done um, more aggressive traffic enforcement, that that's what the police department will come back and tell us that many of the people that are exceeding the speed limit live in the communities that they're driving above the speed limit. So I just want to remind all um, to, to look at your speedometer, to remember that you're in our town, uh, that, that we share the road with a lot of bicycles, pedestrians, other cars. There, there's a lot of people that, that utilize our, our, our roads today. So just try to be careful and, and hopefully, um, I, I think, you know, we talked about it and maybe We'll, we'll ask the chief if uh, look at different signboards for speed. Right now, that seems to be the 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 most effective thing that's out there. I know on 116 where they have this 40 40 mile an hour sign by uh, the um, by Frontier Pizza and Allstate. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people break when. They see they're going 55 and <clears throat> it's posted for 40. So, so maybe we'll, we'll we'll ask the chief if he can go out and make a recommendation on signboards and if he would consider that to be a, a tool that we should have in our, our arsenal. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Tom. Uh, there was a capital planning committee meeting last Monday where some recommendations or non recommendations were uh, included for. The ADA review. Mm. There's a grant round that's coming up now with a cap of maximum of two hundred thousand dollars of allowance. Uh, our recommendations from a couple of weeks ago was a, a myriad of punch list items that certainly passed the straight face test, but didn't have any glitz. So the consensus seemed to be that maybe we could wait for the project that has some uh, glitz and tie it together. Specifically centered around discussion on the elementary school playground and. We get it. There's potential for using that particular grant, ADA grant access, ADA access grant for substrate access ways. Yep, and doing that. Maybe peak, take, peel a piece of that project off and get it funded by the grants. So there was no other rec recommendations to move forward on that. We are going to continue to work. Um, we have another meeting in two, when's it? It's early September, right, Rock? Early September is our next meeting. And uh, that has to do with the building survey that was done and begin setting up those priorities to bring forward to not just this body, but 
whoever else has to weigh in on it, department yeah. heads, um, <clears throat> finance committee, et cetera. So that was, that was last week as well. I've also, to piggyback on what Tom said, is talking about speed, it's also the season of moving trucks here in Sunderland. That's true. It has begun. Time. There's a whole bunch of small moving <clears throat> trucks moving in and out, and I would caution people who are likely watching this uh, or will watch this in the future to pay attention to new residents in town who are, you know, going to be here for three or four years maybe or less and uh, help them out when they need help and don't run them over. And then okay. you've got tractors. It's that it's, time of year. It's, it's harvest it's, time. Everything's, everything's flowing right now. Yep. We have a project, uh, the last piece of the Complete Streets project, which is the Hadley Road sidewalk. We're expecting to begin in two more weeks, yeah. and that will close that that uh, that <coughs> particular grant round out. You were Duke Safe. Yep, I saw it's been Breaking painted. Up. Yep, it's good. So this coordinating with the co the contractor, and that will wrap that up. That will change the corner of Hadley Road and its intersection with Old Amherst. So yep. be prepared for that uh, as well as you see both that work being executed uh, and and uh, the final result. There's going to be more pedestrians there. Yes. So that'll be important to bear in mind. Especially with the link up to the sidewalk work done by the yep. apartments and everything. Yep. Exactly right. It's a good point, David. Okay. Uh, minutes of 729.19. That was our IT presentation. Uh, Chris was in. To, Chris Collins was in to talk about the potential impact of uh, FCC rule change. Yeah. Um, we we just got our f most recent reimbursement, so we we'll make sure FCAT gets those numbers. Yep. Uh, and then there was a discussion about speed, Tom, uh, with respect to Falls Road. And the chief is uh, working, I'm sorry, the COG has been contacted about doing a traffic survey up there, and that'll include the speed as well as quantity, road width, et cetera. Some recommendations. Um, had some updates from Sherry as well. Any discussion on the minutes? Motion. Is there a second? Uh, second. There's a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of 729.19. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. Next up, we have pieces of homework that we had been, we had been charged, we charged ourselves with. And one of them was uh, our aggregation, electricity aggregation agreement with Colonial Power, they came back and asked if we were interested in including language as part of the portfolio of potential power sources. Remember, there's a survey that was put out. The survey is still available. The question about <clears throat> including wood-derived biomass. There is a, at the state level, there has been a change in the regulatory language that allows for would derive biomass to be considered renewable. And our portfolio is a broad-based portfolio right. that the municipality, municipal residents, electricity users can choose from. And the question was sent to the, us by our aggregator, which is kind of fun word. It's like an influencer, but an aggregator, you know, yeah. um, about including wood derived biomass. Laura, I'm um, sorry, not Lauren. Um, I can't Aaron. think of his name right Aaron. Aaron. Aaron was in here uh, at our prior meeting talking about a coalition of folks who are basically uh, lobbying against including uh, wood drive biomass. And it's up to us to decide if we want to include it or not, recommend its inclusion or not. And so I'd like to have that discussion tonight and uh, get that vote out to our aggregator. It's again, only the board that can make this recommendation a request to the aggregator. So, do we include it or not? And we'll have that discussion. And silence fell on the land. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and again, this is why. This is why, I personally didn't think this was a great idea. The aggregation. Yeah. Well, and, and again, it's it's like. <coughs> Bless you. Bless you. It, it, it's a, Sound it's effects a, by FCAT. It, it's a it's a personal decision that that can be made by that made by uh, users that you know if 
what they want. It, and they're going to have three people now sitting in front that, you know, they have their, their own personal beliefs and, and making the decision for, for a town. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. And, 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 and it's been my problem, it's been my problem since day one. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I understand, and I understand the opt in, the ad, opt out, but again, no matter what decision, what decision we make, whatever we say tonight, you're, you're, there are going to be some people that think it's a great decision. Some people make a, it's a bad decision. Yeah. And and I just the only thing we we have so many other pressing things. This this is something that's if if someone wants to do it, go ahead and do it. You know what I mean? Why you're asking three of us to to make that determination? Sure. I I didn't campaign on this on this. Did you campaign on no. this? No. I, I, so I, you know, but we're at, we're being asked, well, what do you think? It's like, okay. It can be argued that's why we're elected, Tom. I get it. No, no. And, and, and again, I, I, I don't think when the selectmen first were formed back in 718, they, they were asking the selectmen if they should at that time, now we're a select board, but they weren't asking the selectmen at that time, can we produce electricity with, it, it doesn't make sense. And, and I don't know, we, we got, we, you know, you're, you, you, you're, you're on a select board because you're trying, you're trying to make your community a better place and, and to maintain fire, police, schools, mm -hmm. highways. Mm -hmm. Not this aggravation stuff. So, so I, I personally, I'm tired of fighting wars in the Middle East because of oil. Tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. So, so if someone wants them, and and I, I know bio, and and in and in and, 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 and there's many. In Europe, Europe has many forms of biomass that they use. It. They they have fields and fields of, of of biomass that they cut and they and it's renewable growth. Mm -hmm. Well, the correspondence of the office has been both sides of this. Of course, actually. yeah, right. There's no clear right. No clear way. On it. So if we if we include that the slippery slope is what what turns into, you know, does uh, wood derived biomass mean um, construction debris? Does it mean whatever? Right? Wood derived right. is always a challenge. Biomass plants don't get permitted very easily, uh, and there's right? a lot of opposition. There's to A lot them of opposition to them, um, and and on a on a purely, um, well, from the, well, purely, from the w homework that I've done at the state sites, both pros and cons sites, um, they're only talking at the state level about a small port portion of this portfolio. Well, that's, that's one piece. The, the cons site is, you know, anytime you've got that kind of, anytime there is that kind of uh, material combustion, the discussion isn't about its sustainability, it pivots to its air quality. Right. And that's what the pivot is. It's always the pivot. I don't know that it's enough to even be worth it mm -hmm. to include in there in terms of like the scale and things like that. And right. I, I think we'd get more bang for the buck looking at other renewables rather than biomass. If remember, renewables aren't exclusively what the portfolio is based on. Price stability right. was an important piece. Nope. Right, long term, st right, long term price stability was a really important piece for this board. If we're going to have was, to deal with this, that was my most important thing. Right, was price. So, and I think that might well, I mean, it could potentially limit, you know. And I, 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 I don't think it's worth cluttering up sure. and messing things up with that. This comes putting in the, that in there. Comes in the same week that the or this discussion comes in the same week the UN says you're going to figure out how to reef rework your thinking on farming and you need to plant about a trillion trees <laughs> right oh okay <coughs> yep <clears throat> i think there's other things that would work better than that sure. tom i again i think that the trees are trees are a renewable if you mm -hmm. look at if you look at the uh 
after the Second World War, what happened in Germany? Germany grows some of the greatest. You sure. want a straight two by four? You buy a German two uh, tree. German dry, Czech, dry, dry. Uh, mm -hmm. Because after after the war, everything there was no trees left, so they went and they grew and they planted trees, and now they got straight trees, and they're getting wonderful two by fours. Mm -hmm. I know. I don't know what you want us. Uh, move on, on this. One. I'm, I'm looking for Make a motion. A, look like at a motion and. To include or include in an aggregation portfolio wood derived biomass. And who asked us to make this determination? <laughs> the aggregator. He's we weren't, aggravating. I mean, we weren't <laughs> planning on putting it in there in the first place. We were not planning on putting it in there. Is so that part of our. Not I part make of a our, motion to include a biomass. Is there a second? No. No second? No second. All right, I'll second it. All those in favor of including uh, the language for wood-derived biomass as part of the aggregation inclusion request signify by saying aye. All those opposed? No. No. I might. No. Three yeah, to zero sorry. and I'm zero sorry. to three. <clears throat> okay, it's not included. The Village Center committee charge. Another piece of homework that we had. What was that? Uh, village, village Center, Committee, Center Charge. Committee Charge. There was three pieces of language. One developed as a straw man uh, in the office. One that was uh, partially marked up. And then there was a third that was submitted uh, as a second markup, um, a little more extensive. And again, this has to do with, well, it's interesting, actually. Hmm. Because if you look at the second and third, Initial charge here was to talk about improvements to 116.47, knowing that we're at, that the intersection is on the state's review. The second added some elements in that, which were which included areas beyond that intersection, basically a true set of village center. And then the third includes a broader um, charge, but also uh, more in the way of deliverables. And the question I have for the, the body here is, um, originally, this was to garner participation in the discussion in and around impacts around the intersection. And now it has gone to a broader charge, which I think they don't have any problem with, um, including visioning processes, north and south main streets, excuse me, as well as the intersection. The body itself stays seven members. I think that makes sense. Seven appointees. Uh, and then has a completion of 2023, which makes sense. You think about that. That's, yep. that's and the goal there, the goal of this charge is, again, a little broader, but the visioning, set, town center visioning process includes, you know, the north and the south of Main Street, the intersections thereof, includes others, other uh, folks to come in and help with that that visioning piece, so, as well as identify grants, mass works, complete yep. streets, school. Coordinate all that. Coordinate those together. things. Yep. So, as far as charges go, I think the third is, is very thorough. The first is very broad, very open-ended. Um, the second has elements of, uh, is, is the baseline for the third, uh, but I think the third also has brackets on it, which is a good thing. Yep, I mean, it, the deliverables I think are important yep. in there. Yep. And I think we probably have to work a little harder than some other towns because our village center is kind of chopped up by the two roads. Yeah, so exactly, it's, it's a good point. It's not as visually cohesive mm -hmm. as a lot of other places. And, and it tends to be a long, narrow one. So we'd have to work a little harder at keeping it all. And there's elements already underway with uh, yep. the pathway piece, 120 North piece, sidewalks that have already been worked on, the complete streets elements, 
It would right. be interesting to, I think it would be helpful, not interesting, helpful to have it all kind of rolled up into into one nice little package. One visioning package. Yep, I would agree. Okay. Is there is there a motion on any one of these charges? One, one, two, and three. The third one seems to be where the dialogue is centered. Motion on three. Yep. Second. Okay. Motion to adopt the third charge number three. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Charge number three. So next, as far as village, uh, so this will be three to zero. Next for that will be appointees. The composition of that. Uh, seven members as follows: two at large, one business rep, one from each, one from each of the following: uh, select board planning, historical community pathways. So, if you're interested in uh, town center, uh, I'm sorry, I think they wanted to call it the village center, but anyway, village Sunderland Village Center Committee, uh, please contact the office, and uh, we'll have Sherry post have the office post out, you know, the availability of this. Yep. We'll have this charge available and. Um, so again, you can contact the office at 1441 or you can email us at Town of Sunderland. Okay, next up, sewer extensions. Hey. John, we had talked, you, David, you weren't here. Uh, we were approached by the developers of Sugarbush Meadow about installing 8,300 or 9,400, depending on the route, feet of sewer from the apartment complex being built off of Plum Tree in 116 uh, to, I guess it would be Old Amherst Road's lift station. And the developers wanted to have conversation about that. Tom and I had some discussion about it. You were out on vacation and uh, it's here. It's okay, vacations are good. <laughs> um, so it's in front of us now, uh, only in the form of discussion. We left Tom uh, and I when we left our last meeting. It was about well, he's, clearly there's there's a, an engineering component. Clearly there's road work. Clearly there's right. under other underground infrastructure. Clearly there's etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Lift station smell etc. 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 We haven't carved out from a municipal perspective, carved this out as a project with a particular priority as a priority. Mm -hmm. We had a basic survey of it done with uh, tie and bond half of the time, the years go by anyway, sometime in this decade, Yes, right? half, a dozen, <laughs> half a dozen years ago. Um, and it was something that was going to be really expensive. So then uh, have what kind of impact for the south side of town? Not quite sure. Uh, this essentially is, is um, a home run. I mean, people could probably tie into it, but we haven't had any, any discussions like that at all. The question on the table right now is do we even want to entertain it? Scott, in, in my opinion, look, the, the way the sugar bush first started is that one of our town administrators, Bob Biaggi, with, with Scott Nielsen, asked to talk to the planning board, mm -hmm. and the planning board said, Put something on on paper so that we can understand what you're talking about, and we'll have a solid, good discussion about it. Fast forward a year, then, or not even a year, then we were getting something that our, our planning board wasn't wouldn't talk to them, which wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. And and then all if anybody's been paying attention all the way through the zoning board and everything else process, and even till today, I don't think the plans really the plans aren't really if you used to ask somebody today if all the plans are in place they're gonna tell you probably not mm -hmm. even they started building mm -hmm. okay I will say once more bring us a proposal that we can talk about and we can have an honest discussion and that's something that you're actually going to do so if you want to bring that forward I'd love to have the conversation I am not going to discuss hypotheticals sure it's pretty simple. Come to us with a plan. Now, the town of Sunderland and its residents should also, there, there has, there, there's more than just our thing. You have to look at what happens to, what happens to the building lots between um, 
that, that are going along the line. Are, are people going to be able to tie into those lines? Right. What right. cost is the town going to have to share? Are did they did they planning on one lift station, two lift stations, and where are you going to put them, and how are you going to put them? Are you going to sure. put it, it on somebody's private land? If only there was a plan that you could There's consult. There's no plan, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all, and the next thing you know is that you're 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 working from mm-hmm. behind. You're working behind from behind the eight ball. Mm-hmm. I would res- my response to them would be pretty simple. Show us a plan. Mm-hmm. Sit down and we'll talk about it. Okay. I'm not going to talk hypotheticals. It doesn't do us any good. Sure. That so be- let's invite them to our next meeting with whatever plan they've. If got. they have a plan. If they have a plan. Got it. Yeah. And especially when you look at historically what their initial plan was to do with the waste. <laughs> well, I don't I don't <clears throat> I don't why, see why there why are you talking needs about it now you're building us. you're building it. Right. Right. You're building it's it. It's a little yeah. late for, you know, mm-hmm. doing How that. are you going to how are you going to get the wastewater treatment plant? How are you going to get to the wastewater treatment plant now? They, that that tells me that they have a plan. Mm. There's a plan. Share us with a plan. Okay. Easy. Would you say? I would concur. Yep. Why would you be coming now? Because we're build we're, we're going to build the wastewater treatment plant on site, and we're going to put in a sewer line. <clears throat> I don't think so. <clears throat> That's not how businessmen make money. I mean, it makes one wonder just hypothetically if that was the plan all along. I, don't even I would I never would. accuse anybody associated with that team or prior teams of baiting and switching. No. Never. Okay, we'll bring. A, we'll see if they got a plan. Bring him. Bring him into a meeting. Sounds yeah. like a sounds like and a plan. Then, and then let and then we can make people know and put it on the agenda and sure. to make people right. come and, and kids, see the plan. Yeah. Exactly. Because you're right. Why it has are you a, afraid of that? It has a big it public does. effect on sure a number of things. So you're gonna go buy a bunch of houses. Pretty simple, right? <clears throat> so on a separate. Sugarbush and Meadows, the legal counsel for the DBA is reviewing a conveyance of the property rights uh, from the apartment developer to another limited liability cor- corporation uh, for the development of a municipal water supply on that, what is that, eastern slope where the wellheads originally were set up to be in support of the apartments. That is no longer the case. Hmm. They tied into the water district and are developing that wellhead site for municipal purposes. That's the application. I wouldn't accuse them of baiting and switching. So, so my my question is, my my question would be to who whoever the whoever happens to be the controlling authority because it doesn't. I don't know who that would be, sure. but what does this have to do? Because when they put in the plan, there was a financial plan. Yep. Yep. Okay. So yep. how can you say that, so that that you have to make the numbers work? Mm-hmm. So I, I would say who who's reviewing who's repu- who's reviewing those numbers mm-hmm. and to understand if if something has changed. Correct. So the answer is the ZBA uh, approves the permit. The ZBA's yeah. attorneys are looking at this as, as they have with all of the changes, yeah. and that process is underway. I raise it only to inform the public of yet another yep. unfilled, action-packed conversation from well, down there. if anybody didn't see it happening, they, they were blind. I well, understand. So the water commissioners probably should have seen it coming also. So, And, and, and I would say that... I would think that they would somebody before they they put in a water source would come to the town and ask the town what do you think because as far as I knew our water district said that they didn't want to buy water from there that they didn't need that water and it wouldn't it wouldn't be a redundant source so that means that it would have to be going either out to Amherst and or the town of Hadley mm-hmm. so before the town of water the town of Sunderland the water that's in the town of Sunderland aquifer under us that's taken out from our our supply that DEP or someone would ask the town um, what we thought also correct and I guess we would have an opinion about that we would certainly have an opinion that's for sure okay the peanut gallery has a question hey sorry
Mm -hmm. I think there's a stipulation in the final decision mm -hmm. that allows it, and there may also be a stipulation answering your question, Tom, where, where the money aspect of it has to be included in the financial calculation. Mm -hmm. yes. So any money made there, I believe there's a stipulation that speaks to that. Mm -hmm. I agree that's, with you. That's I, what Jay's reviewing. We get those emails today, and that's, yeah. what, that's what Councilor Tallerman is reviewing. I, I, I agree with you, Ron. I, I I don't I know that they were given a twenty seven million dollar <laughs> loan. Yep. And and that loan was based on numbers, so we'll see. So that's that said, those pieces up from the sugar bush. So I thought I would update the public on that. Tom, you would ask to have uh the next agenda item brought on. People who go up and down North Main Street, see a big for sale sign at Demo's restaurant. Uh, the owners have um, contacted the office about any interest the town may have in that with respect to senior housing. So, it's on the agenda. Well, I, I just thought it was, is, is, is I wanted to see if, if our board had any, had any, um, I've talked to Ronnie a couple of times. Uh -huh. Ronnie, now, it's just the Demo restaurant. It's not the entire property. Correct. Okay. There would be, according to Ronnie, I guess there would be some kind of right of first refusal for the home, but it, it's just for the Demo restaurant itself. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't know what, you know, Scott, we, we saw, you, you've worked on the, the housing I had, would it be beneficial to the the project? Yeah, actually, it was one of the, it was one of the schemes that the one of the twelve different potential developments yeah. would look like at one twenty. And even if you bought the house and the restaurant, you'd have to do something with the house yeah. if it was access way to get to the back from the south of the what's now Ronnie's mom's house yeah and you would have to deal with a second kind of piece of historic construction that wouldn't yield you any more units so it wasn't it wasn't one that was brought forward to recommend and Not I think beneficial. Lauren I think Lauren from the Lauren Star from the 120 North Main uh, working group mm -hmm. has sent those drawings to us uh, those originals and you look at it and it doesn't help a lot and yeah. that was when there was a different footprint. Now we have a condensed footprint because of the wetland setback. Yep. And there wasn't a lot there. Yeah. So it wasn't brought forward. It was reviewed to look at all three of those addresses. And it was we yeah. and it was not recommended. Okay. And and, and, and I guess that's, that's the biggest question. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And 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 and, and, and Ronnie said a, a few people have been looking at the thing to keep it in the commercial. Yeah. The commercial. Yep. And I guess that's a good thing. So I agree. Yeah, I would agree. A little variety is good down there. But if you you check your email, you should have one from uh, Lauren it included Laura from RDI. Yeah. Okay. And yes. and that it's a it's a Berkshire Design schematic review the attachment. What it would what the potential was, and I think it was it was either seven or nine but they're both they're both in our inboxes and this okay. the short answer was no it didn't help us thank you Scott. okay okay uh speaking of old buildings one of the pieces of access uh declare one of the pieces of the building survey that came out of uh, the brown architect and his engineering team was about what's the town's thoughts if for use of the old fire station and so the question was about the old fire station is there a it needs a little bit of work primarily the, the front and the paving and some roof work etc uh, we have in front of us and I, I asked to have this put on as an extension of the capital planning committee discussion for the last half a year now you know, if, if the town doesn't have a particular use for it, we should dig up the deeds, in particular, uh, any conveyances as part of the Blue Heron agreement 
and see what the town's position would be and have a discussion at this level and then probably bring it need to bring it to town meeting because of its value yep. about dis but disposing of it or its long-term needs for repairs so we currently we currently um, work with the water district on its its use the water district uses the space and that's why it's on the agenda so any thoughts initial thoughts or discussion i don't expect any kind of a decision there's a lot to lot to unearth but we should at least have the conversation going through the budget process because we do budget money for it yep. as well as the capital process because there was uh, some six digit figures and just blacktop work in and around the area because there's a bunch of blacktop out there you know, yes. that kind there's of stuff of paper, getting right. water up so it pitches away and remember that building is on a slab it doesn't have a basement so the question is how much water can you keep out and Etc. Yeah. Etc. Etc. Et my 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 thing is, Scott, is that I would talk to the fire district and see what their their long term goal is. Water district. Or the fire. You said the fire district. Water district. Water district. Sorry. Okay. I would I would talk to the water district and see what their long term if, if their long term is 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 continue is is due to maintenance. Yep. And to maintain the building. And and continue to use it going yep. forward. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But if they're not going to maintain the building for what we get on rent, I well, I don't see any reason for us keeping it. Uh, okay. Yep. I so would agree the, because otherwise it's just sitting there slowly crumbling. And absolutely right. I, and I no thought that was, I thought that was part of the yeah. the the rep, mm -hmm. the and it's been a number of years. It's been twenty years right. since we did worked on almost twenty years. Yeah, pretty close. But but I thought I thought that was one of the things that that. Uh, the, the fire district was going to, uh, but at that time we were still the highway garage was, you know, the fire station was still there. Part of that, yeah. But I thought they were going to maintain it. So, and I think they have. Yeah. Oh, well, there's no doubt so, in my mind. So, and again, I say, hey, look, if you want to maintain it, look, this, these are things that. But if you're not going to maintain it, then why would we keep it? Right. Right. Because you get to those think you're starting to get to the point where there's bigger ticket maintenance items. Right. Right. There's bigger ticket items. That's yep. correct, David. Yeah, way to put it. So, so I, I would I would I would ask the you know I would ask Sherry to contact the water commissioners and ask them what what their intention is and I think then we need to then we need to actually sit down and, and make a, a more formal designation of, yep. of who's responsible for what on maintenance wise. Okay, so over the next couple of weeks we'll reach out to them. Again, the reason for bringing it up in, in the doldrums of August is these wheels turn so fast. Right? We want to make sure that if we have something to bring to town meeting, we want to be able to, there it is, I finally found it. Whew. Declaring surplus. All, it's nice to have a book full of procedures all tabbed, but everything seems to start with S. So anyway, declaration of anything over over this value requires not just us, but also yeah. town meeting. So That's fine. To keep that discussion alive. Okay. Next. Uh, just an update on the status of our select board of awesome name change uh, that's being submitted to the state legislature through representative Blaze's office and I want to thank you for that there's there's language here missing the word awesome but we can always add it uh, for being and sent being sent to the legislature for uh, review and could be an interesting test to actually put it in there to see how far it gets from the process we can pause whatever we want. exactly it's true we could so again, we've taken town meeting and the board has taken that action. It's up right now in front of uh, Ms. Wallace, the legislative aide for uh, Representative Blay. And uh, the question, there's a draft associated with it. It basically is the code previously known as the Board of Selectmen shall be known as the select board. That's pretty much the change legislatively. Yep rather than because we're not dissolving an existing body no. and yeah no, no it's, right. changing it's just name. a name it's a it's a rebranding exactly we're rebranding <laughs> rebranding rebranding no new logo yes. stuff you know what I no i don't want i don't want to do the <laughs> rebranding. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay so no, that's oh no we already did that once or twice so that's that's a status it doesn't look like there's anything controversial in the language obviously it being legislative right. council will look at it and that'll be it uh, right. Conservation restriction for Montague Road. We have some signatures that are due uh, downstairs. Our correspondence actually says from correspondence actually says 
that it's the chair of the from DCR. Okay. As the landowner, so, this so is basically they, they were just they were just out there to uh, review the uh, make sure the conservation restriction was being adhered yep. to. Yep. Yeah. Pretty easy. Pretty easy, and it is. They love the piece of property. Right. It's good. It's a good thing. <coughs> so we'll sign that accordingly. Uh, downstairs, that's four copies. One for us. Pretty straightforward. Uh, Council on Aging appointment. Ladonna Olanik. Olanik. Make a motion to appoint Donna. Adana Atlantic to the uh, Council of Aging. That means we have two members. We're still looking for more members, but Ladonna would join uh, Ms. Foster. Great. Second. And thank you for um, volunteering, both of them. Absolutely. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Town administrator updates. None. Turn left. None. All right. Uh, Sherry is out tonight. She let us know she'd be out. Uh, we've got 826 conceptual design meeting for uh, School Street options, ADA improvements. There's some boards downstairs with concepts. And then 923 uh, Mass DOT, 6 p.m. public hearing here about North Main Street uh, reconstruction project. Public comment? Is your chance, FCAT? You can say something. All right. No. You can even say mum is the word. Mum's the word. All right. Yeah. Uh, any more discussion from the board? Motion. Is there a motion second? Second. Motion is made and seconded. A nameless motion, but our intuition says that, that will be a motion of adjournment. Yes. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. You can call us out at six. No, it says 725. My watch is off. No, 725. 725. Sorry, yeah. my watch is right. All right. Thanks, FCAT.